OK, so here we have three more animals. We've got a camel, a monkey and a sheep. Now, again, I would like you to have a think. Where do you think these animals live? So in which habitat do they live? And why do you think they live there? Have a think about what might be in the habitat that will help them to survive. And also how their bodies adapted to living in this habitat. So pause the video now and have a think. OK, yeah, too. So let's have a look at the first animal. So our first animal is a camel. Now, we've spoken about a camel both last lesson and earlier on in this lesson. But where does a camel live? Well, a camel lives in a desert area. OK, and as we know, camels are able to go without food or water for long periods of time. Now, why is this useful that a camel can go a long time without any food or water? Well, it is useful in the desert because there is very little food or water for the camel to have. So therefore, the camel has adapted to living in a desert by being able to go a long time without any food or water. Now, also, they have feet that help them to walk on soft sand easily okay so their feet are able to walk on the sand very easy so there we go there are two ways in which camels have adapted to living in desert areas both their feet and the fact that they can live uh, they can go for a long period of time without any food or water okay now what was our next animal ah uh, yes that's right it was a monkey wasn't it now monkeys live in forest areas okay so monkeys live in forests and where in the forest do they live well they live in trees don't they and they are very good climbers okay so that's one good thing about monkeys living in a forest they're good climbers so they can climb up the trees now what can they get from the tops of the trees well they can get one of their basic needs for survival which is food because at the top of the trees they can find fruit to eat. Now, as well as being able to get fruit to eat from the tops of the trees, what else, how else might the trees be very helpful for them? Well, yes, the trees are very useful because as well, they are able to hide from their predators. So they are able to hide from the animals that are looking to eat them. OK, so they can climb to the tops of the trees and they can hide at the top so that their predators can't see them. Just like almost, but the other way around, how the lion hides in the grass to catch their prey. The monkey hides at the top of the trees so that their his predator can't see him to be able to eat him. So there we go. We had the camel who has the feet and the fact that they're able to go a long time without food and water. And we have the monkey who lives in forest areas who can climb up the trees to get fruit to eat, but also to hide from their predators. OK, now what was our last animal? Oh, yes, that's right. It was a sheep, wasn't it? Now, sheep and other grazing animals such as horses and goats and cows. OK, so any animal basically that eats grass. So as I said, sheep, horses, goats and cows, they all live in areas where there is lots to eat eat okay now sheep spend a few hours a day eating and need to be in fields where there is plenty of grass so that is why this habitat is suitable for a sheep because there's lots and lots of grass for it to eat and as they eat for a few hours a day it is very helpful so it's very good for the animal for a sheep to live in a field because there is lots of grass okay so well done if you got those three right, if you guess where the different animals live and why they might live there, that's fantastic. OK, now here we have a picture of a cow and a fish. Now, what do you think would happen if a cow and a fish swapped homes? Because remember, a cow lives in grass, um, lives in fields because there's lots of grass and a fish lives underwater because remember it has gills and it has smooth body doesn't it so it can move easily in the water hmm. but what would happen if a cow and a fish swapped homes now let me have a think about this a cow do you think a cow is able to live underwater no it wouldn't be able to breathe underwater would it so therefore i don't think it would go very well if a cow lived underwater as well i don't think 
that there's much grass underwater, do you, for the cow to eat? So therefore, that's another reason why a cow definitely shouldn't live underwater. Well, what about the fish? Why might it not be a good idea for a fish to live where a cow lives? Well, a fish has to live underwater, doesn't it? And is there any water where the cow lives? Well, no, there isn't, is there? A cow lives in a field. There's no water there. And again, a fish breathes using its gills, doesn't it? It takes in the oxygen that it needs using its gills. So therefore, because it doesn't have lungs, it wouldn't be able to live where the cow lives. OK, so no, I definitely don't think these two animals should swap homes, do you? No, OK, let's have a look at these two animals. What do you think would happen if a penguin and a camel swapped homes? Could you pause the video now and have a think? OK, well, let's have a think about the camel first. We know that a camel lives in a desert, doesn't it? And in the desert, it is very hot. So therefore, do you think a camel would be able to survive where a penguin lives? Oh, no, it wouldn't, would it? Because a penguin lives in a very cold environment. So therefore, a camel would not be very used to living in a cold environment because where it lives at the moment is very hot, isn't it? So it wouldn't be able to survive in that environment. And the same for the penguin. The penguin lives in a very cold environment. So therefore, it wouldn't be able to live in the desert, would it? Because it's very, very hot. And a penguin, unlike a camel, cannot go for a long time without food and water. So it wouldn't be able to survive in the desert. Because remember, penguins swim in the water, don't they? So therefore, they wouldn't be able to do that in the desert, would they? OK, fantastic. So well done if you were able to think of those reasons why a camel and a penguin definitely shouldn't swap habitats. OK, so this is your task for today. Now you have two options and you'll find both of these options on your resource, Year 2 Science, 1st of March, Resource 2. So you have Worksheet 5B, OK, and it gives you the animal. It gives you where they like to live. So, for example, the first one, it says polar bear likes to live in cold and icy areas near water so they can catch fish. And then from the selections above, so we have desert, Arctic, ocean, pond, field, seaside, forest and underground. You need to pick the best environment, the best habitat for that animal, OK, based on where they like to live. Now, if you'd like a little bit more, more of a challenge, you can have a go at Worksheet 5C, where you are given the animal and you need to pick the best environment for them. And then you need to explain why that environment is suitable for them. OK, so like the polar bear, it is the fact that it's cold and icy and they like living in cold and icy areas near water and they can also catch fish there. OK, so you need to pick the best environment for them and explain why that is the best environment. OK, so I'm looking forward to seeing this work when it's completed and you send it to the office. Have a lovely rest of your day, Yeti, and I'll see you in our next science lesson, which will be when we're back at school. Fantastic. Well, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.